it would be hard to find a more impressive trial than this hyper-yielding cereals project in northern Tasmania. It's a great pleasure and honour to open the field day. Thank you. The project is a five-year investment for GRDC and its partners Far Australia and Southern Farming Systems. For growers, the benefits will have a much longer lifespan. It's the grain growers can come here and they see that they're, they're producing five, seven tonnes uh, per hectare on their farms and they can see here people producing 14, 15 tonnes per hectare with, with really strong profitability driving that. So not a huge extra cost to their businesses. Go away really excited and, and ask questions. What's the equation to make it happen? 160 very curious locals, as well as mainlanders, turned out to get some answers and see for themselves the extent of the work. At this research site we have a thousand experimental plots that are dedicated to improving feed grain uh, productivity here in Tasmania. Um, with that special emphasis not only on picking the right agronomic characteristics, such as has it got the right development profile for Tasmania, but disease resistance and standing power, but equally what's its quality attributes for an end user. The first year of the project, 2015, was a planning year. Over the next two years the germplasm was sourced, local and imported long season cereal lines. 50 of wheat and 10 of barley were sown in early April and around Anzac Day to compare their potential. Those lacking the right characteristics, especially disease resistance, were culled and by the 2018 season only 10 lines remained. Tasmania, because of its naturally wetter environment, an irrigated environment, means that disease pressure is probably the highest of any point in Australia and lasts for longer than anywhere in Australia. So if we don't have good disease resistance, we're actually going to be chasing our tail with regards to fungicide inputs. A major fungal disease of the high rainfall zone cereals is Septoria tritici blotch. That disease is now spreading to medium rainfall zones, and that's focused even more attention on the hyper-yielding cereals project from plant breeders and R&D centres, such as Curtin University's Centre for Crop and Disease Management. The reason why we're here in Tasmania today is because um, Tasmania, unfortunately, seems to be ground zero for fungus resistance. As well as identifying the best germplasm, the best disease resistance, standability and grain quality, understanding the nutrient input necessary to achieve hyper yields is another focus of the project. We estimated in our first year in 2016 that we were in some of our highest yielding varieties taking out 400 to 450 kilos of nitrogen out of the soil. So nutrition's been a focus for us, but it's quite ironic. We haven't found that applying 400 kilos of nitrogen to the crop has been necessary to generate those yields. So we know that the fertility of our farming system is actually what's supporting uh, those yields in the first place. Now, we have to look at replacing that nutrition, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to put huge amounts of applied fertiliser. In fact, our optimums here have rarely been above 200 to 225 kilos of N. The abundant nitrogen levels of these fertile northern Tasmanian farming systems is due in large part to the vast selection of rotation crops and mixed farming enterprise options here. And that sets the region apart from the mainland regions. The common ground is that these hyper-yielding cereals are being grown in a high rainfall zone. We've now set up uh, the South Australian Crop Technology Centre and that was inspired by growers and advisors from South East South Australia coming down to hyper-yielding and saying why don't we do something like this in our neck of the woods. And in 2017 the highest yielding variety on this site 
was the same as the highest yielding variety at Millicent in South East South Australia. Lifting yields, even to the project's inspirational target of the top 10% of growers achieving 14 tonnes per hectare, comes with a caveat. Grain quality also needs to improve to meet the feed grain sector's specifications. And whether it's the protein or whether it's the starch that that particular sector wants, and whether some of these candidates are able to produce that more efficiently uh, than others. So, this engagement with the end user is again a, a really important objective of the project. And as the project identifies something that has the promise to offer more productivity, more profitability, it's farmed out to what Nick Poole calls the project's focus farms. And the ideal is to try out either germplasm or perhaps a technique that we think is looking particularly favourable. So, Absolutely, it's no, do, no, no good us doing the research unless we can get the adoption on farm as quickly as possible. Three focus farms have been established in Tasmania and there are farmers as far away as WA's Esperance region wanting to get involved. And with two years to go until the Hyper Yielding Cereals project winds up, it's already very successfully caught the imagination of high rainfall zone grain growers everywhere.